There is no country in the world whose very existence is questioned so vehemently than Israel. Yet the Jewish lobby is still busy with petty nonsense that creates even more anti-Semites. Let's explore. Hello everyone, and welcome to another installment of Freedom Alternative Research and Analysis. Just recently I have learned that the EU is going to ask everyone in the 28 unfortunate nations of this federal dictatorship to label some Israeli products as made in Israeli settlement or some similarly demented shoit. But in order to find out more about this, I had to go read the American alternative media, because for all the anti-Semites whining that the media is biased in favor of Israel, the CNN, the NBC, Fox News, The Telegraph, The Guardian, and most of the mainstream out outlets in English didn't seem to quite have the time to cover this outrageous development in EU policy, despite the news being a week old by now. The traditional suspects that, for lack of a better term, I'll call them the Jewish lobby, are also quite absent from this discussion as well. I have yet to see a declaration from the ADL, for instance, on this topic. All those organizations that had a complete meltdown because someone made a joke and had a personalized credit card with the happy merchant in Norway, all of them are silent right now. From where I'm standing, these knuckleheads are the Jewish equivalent of white Anglo-Saxon social justice warriors. Immune to common sense, immune to humor, and with an unshakable belief that they can boss everyone around, except when it actually matters. And this is even more obvious in continental Europe, where Jewish organizations, having exhausted their mission to fight fascism long time ago, are now busy looking to invent new problems pretty much like the feminists. So let's take a look at the latest stupidity emanated from the Jewish lobby and then I'll say more. Blitz.rs, which stands for Republika Serbia, titles Janja Bech, we instituted sexual education in school, genocide should also be a subject. And goes like this. Sociologist and peace activist Janja Bech Neumann has concluded that children in Serbia need to learn about genocide as a separate subject and that such a subject should be approached from a comparative point of view. During an event called Small Town Spirit and the Fascistization of the Society that took place last night in Zrenjanin, Janja Bech Neumann insisted that the school system doesn't provide enough knowledge about genocide and that society needs to work on preventing it. The subject of genocide is not presented properly. The way kids learn about genocide is not based on facts, nor is it taught in a sufficient amount, the sociologist states. She insisted that talking about such a subject must not be based on propaganda that has a goal to cause new hate. Janja Bech Neumann added that the genocide as a school subject should be a pilot project. If Vojvodina has managed to introduce sexual education as a school subject, then this could happen as well. So, no forcing, it is only for those who wish to learn about it, with professors who want to teach it, but who are also competent and non-hating people, as such a subject may not be abused, Jana, Janja Bech Neumann stated. Provincial Secretary for Sports and Youth, Marinka Tepic, has announced that her office would start a campaign that would involve showing testimonies from the Holocaust. She insists that rehabilitation and peacemongering laws made the crime seem relative, and that the law prohibiting any displays of fascist symbols is not being upheld. Our society is not being judgmental, thinking that they are not ours. It is always easier to judge strangers, but when it comes to a neighbor, a school or a priest, it becomes difficult. The gloves that hide fascism are bringing into question the development of our society, added Marinka Tepic. Senka Jankov, professor in Zrenjanin's high school, states that the teaching program in Serbia only deals with the Holocaust twice, once in the 8th grade of elementary school and again in the 4th year of high school. 
She stated that the Ministry of Education is actively promoting the culture of remembrance and introducing the story about the Holocaust in regular teaching schedule. Yankov has explained that such a subject should be taught in a multidisciplinary fashion and that teachers who are not teaching history should find room in their schedule to deal with the Holocaust. Historian Olga Manoilovich has evaluated that there is a need to discuss the responsibility of the community for forgetting about it these days. She presented parts of an exhibition called Last Stop Auschwitz, showed in Serbia's Museum of History this year. Comic book author Alexander Zograf, who illustrated a comic book about letters of Hilda Daic, insists that the Holocaust is a topic that is easier to approach from a scientific point of view, but also that his comic book is an example of a different way of thinking about it. He states that one of the advantages of a comic book is that such a medium uses words and pictures and that such a way of describing the Holocaust need to be developed even further. When one reads such an article, one may be tempted to think that Serbia is a horribly oppressive place where Jews are being whipped at every corner, Jews feel unsafe to walk the streets for fear of being stabbed or shot at, and Jewish products are being labeled to make boycott easier. Oh wait, sorry, that's the European Union, not Serbia. It's also interesting that this attention whore wants to talk about Auschwitz and special classes Yet most of the Jews in World War II that were indeed killed in former Yugoslavia were at a place called Jasenovac. Established by the authorities of the independent state of Croatia during World War II by the governing Ustashe regime and not operated by either Nazi Germany or Serbian authority. So if you want to talk about the involvement of Serbo-Croatian speaking people in the World War II Holocaust, you ought to start with Jasenovac. But then again, why focus on the facts when you can just import a narrative that is completely off base and try to run with it? The reality is that the Holocaust is not being forget forgotten in Serbia as adaptations of the diary of Anne Frank are still being shown today, today on public television along with many, many other documentaries and fictional films about the Holocaust that focus on what happened to Jews in Germany. The films about World War II that focus on Yugoslavia are nowadays mostly delegated to cable channels that specialize in Yugoslavian cinematography. But they are still being promoted. Last time I was in Belgrade, the National Museum of History had an exhibition dedicated to totalitarianism, and although it was dedicated mostly to the communist experience, it had its section about the Holocaust, especially the end of the Holocaust, where the comic liberators were quite reluctant to liberate the Jews because, you see, they were too capitalist. And this is another detail that seems to unite actual anti-Semites. Another reality to which fuckers like this peace activist Neumann is oblivious to is the fact that the Holocaust is barely a blip on the radar of Serbian history of atrocities. As I said, the harshest killings of Jews in the area during World War II did not even happen under Serbian authority. On the other hand, there are the much bigger events and much more close to home for the Serbian people, like, you know, World War I, World War II, the First and the Second War Balkan Wars, the 90s war in Yugoslavia, or the 1999 NATO bombardment. And that's just in the last 100 years. There's also quite a lot to talk about uh, in the 19th century Serbia, like the first and the second uh, a Serbian uprising against the Ottomans. So with the risk of sounding cynical, the sheer scale of atrocities that happened in Serbia is big enough to make any sane person ask. Why so much insistence on talking about only a tiny subset of victims in only one of the six atrocities that happened in Serbia just in the last 100 years. And if you still don't get where I'm coming from, let me put it this way. If the Jewish lobby in Serbia would really have the best interests of Jews at, at its heart, it would be keeping itself busy with improving the relationships between Serbia and Israel. Israel has been kind with Serbia and kept Serbia's side in their conflict with the Kosovar kebabs. In 1999, Israel fought tooth and nail diplomatically to stop the NATO bombings of Serbia. 
former member of the Knesset, the Israeli parliament, that is, an influential lawyer, um, Eliakim Hatzni, called Serbians our traditional friends during the 1999 NATO campaign, and Ariel Sharon used all his influence to make things better because, contrary to the modern demented Jewish lobby, the Serbian population has a history of saving Jews during the Holocaust. Serbia, on the other hand, voted in 2011 to accept Palestine as UNESCO's 195th member, thus contributing to the institutionalized anti-Semitic circle jerk commonly known as the United Nations. You don't hear that from the Jewish lobby because the Jewish lobby is busy. You hear it from a smoking non-Jew who speaks into a lousy camera. Now, why is that? Well, the answer is quite simple. It's because what's happening in Serbia is not a weird exception, but it's the norm internationally. The Jewish lobby is the kind of stinky shoit that muddies the water so much that it actually creates anti-Semites and obliterates any discussion meant to bring at least some clarity into the discourse. Take for instance the American-Israel Public Affairs Committee, IPAC, which is allegedly a highly influential Zionist Jew organization that runs the US and most of Canada, if we are to believe its enemies. Or it is an incredibly effective uh, lobbying group that advocates pro-Israel policies to the Congress and the executive branch of the United States, if we are to believe IPAC. In reality, IPAC is neither of them. In fact, in terms of honesty and influence, IPAC could reasonably be compared with the European Institute of Peace, which is a do-nothing NGO funded by the EU whose opinions don't matter to anyone and which cares as much about peace in Europe as I care about the grammar inflections of the Zulu language. In fact, in a good day, a video of mine persuades more people in a day than IPAC or the European Institute of Peace does in a year. If IPAC didn't exist, Israel's enemies would have had to invent it. Its existence gives them a powerful Israel lobby to claim to fight against. Yet IPAC was remarkably silent when the Democratic Party's platform deleted the usual mention of Jerusalem as Israel's capital and removed its call to boycott Hamas. When it matters, IPAC is nowhere to be found. And don't get me started on IPAC's competition, J Street, which is in the business of producing documentaries that are actually better than what the Paul Chan board and other serious or edgy anti-Semites produce. But you don't see the Jewish Internet Defense Force going after them, because it's easier to troll people online and report videos with 50 views and claim to have fought anti-Semitism online for yet another day. So given these realities, is it any wonder that anti-Israel sentiment has been growing? It comes as no surprise to me. When you go full force after petty jokes and go full retard about issues that don't even exist, such as the alleged forgetting in Serbia, while simultaneously staying silent when it actually matters, don't be surprised if your cause loses popularity. It happened with other causes as well, so there's no reason to think this can't happen with the pro-Israel cause. And it is a pity to me, because as much flack as I get whenever I affirm my position to Israel, I still do like Israel, for very pragmatic reasons, mind you, namely that I prefer civilization to barbarity any time of the day. Not to mention that just as I believe my people deserve a country where they are 80% or more, I extend the same courtesy to Jews as well just like I extended to Nigerians, or Frenchmen, or any other people. Alright, I think I've made myself enough friends for one video. <laughs> so I guess I'll see you around on Freedom Alternative.